Welcome to a new video and in this video I want to review the Voller phone that I got a few weeks ago and yeah this is a special device that ships with multiple operating systems besides the Vola OS which is an Android based operating system there's also Ubuntu Touch available and Sailfish OS I have the Ubuntu Touch version here and this is the version that I will review so let's get started The device comes with this nice little white color or a gray color. It is plastic, however, and this is not only plastic on the back, but also on the side it has plastic. And uh, the uh, glass on the top here should be on the display, should be Gorilla Glass or some other protection. It's not plastic, at least. It feels very lightweight. It's a bit thick, as you can see here. The device is a bit thick, and the Build quality, however, is solid, I think. It feels a bit cheap, not like a 300 euro phone, more like a 150 euro phone, but still it feels comfortable in the hand. It fits nicely with its form factor of 6.4 inch. And uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with this. If you want to protect the device, uh, Voller or Hello Welt GmbH is also shipping with a soft TPU case. This is also a very cheap one, but it can protect not only the back from scratches, but also the front because it has some kind of layer of protection here where it sticks over the display a bit. The display on the Voller phone is a 6.3 inch IPS display with uh, 2340 by 20 uh, by 1080p uh, pixels 409 ppi and uh, yeah you can see ips display the colors shift a bit if i turn the device around and uh, this is a good display has some kind of bluish tint a bit but in general is a sharp display and it's a good display with 500 nits in terms of uh, brightness it is also okayish for its price region to read in direct sunlight. Ubuntu Touch has some unique user interface and unique ways to control the multitasking here with this um, view where you can flip between the various different applications or quickly flip in between two applications as you can see here. And of course on the left side you have the possibility to go all to your all applications but also between applications you have the ability to switch like a dog or a task manager. The amount of applications that are available is a bit limited for Ubuntu Touch. You can see here some of the recommended applications and we have also some categories here where we can see how many applications are in a particular category and you can see it is quite scarce here. Some applications are missing, most of them are web apps just like Amazon for example. You have various different Amazon apps here which are simply web apps. The speed of the device is usually pretty good but as soon as you go into a web application just like the YouTube application for example or the web browser it gets pretty slow. Uh, not in charging but in scrolling for example you can see it is like stuttering and reloading and the same goes for the Morph browser, which is a pretty good browser, but it has some issues when it comes to um, loading websites, modern websites that are a bit slow. You can see here, this is pretty slow and scrolling sometimes stops and uh, yeah, it is a good browser, but a bit slow. Maybe it is the hardware. Maybe it is the software optimization that is still a bit lacking here. On the back you have two cameras, a 16 megapixel and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. You can only use the 16 megapixel camera and the depth sensor, at least on Ubuntu Touch, is basically useless. The 16 megapixel images that come out of there are pretty okay but nothing groundbreaking so dynamic range is very low if you shoot against the sun or against uh, some light objects forget about it even if you have hdr on i didn't even notice much of a difference with hdr on or off 
The Media Helio P23 is not the fastest processor, it's a bit older so you get an older Wi-Fi standard, only Bluetooth 4.2 and overall I think scrolling website and so on is fine but here and there you can feel some stutter effect especially if you go to this 3D view you can see it stutters a few times if you have lots of applications open so it might be a bit slow. The internal storage is a little bit small with 64 gigabytes and slow. EMMC memory flash will be used here. It's about 56 gigabytes that you have free on start with Ubuntu. You can see 54 gigabytes free space I have here right now with some applications installed. In terms of battery life, the Vodafone is kind of somehow a mixed bag. I noticed that the standby usage is pretty high with Ubuntu Touch, which is, I think, a little bit bad. If you use the device, it's a bit better, but as soon as you start playing multimedia stuff like YouTube videos or audio or videos in general, you have an issue with the battery life. The same goes for using the cameras, the front or the back camera. You get pretty quickly a rundown of the 4700 hours, which I think would be not an issue on Android, but sadly it is on Ubuntu Touch because it is not so optimized for this usage. The good thing is that with the USB Type-C uh, 2.0, but you have the possibility to fast charge it via quick charging, 18 watts, it's not the fastest nowadays, but still it is quick in charging the 4700 milliampere hours. Also, additionally, you get, which is like, I would call a premium feature because in the middle class mid-range devices, you don't get the option to just put it on a G charging and wirelessly charge the device. I think it is pretty slow in wireless charging, uh, 5 to 10 watts maybe, it's not 15 watts, um, at least it doesn't feel like 15 watts, it's slower than this. So I think max is 10 watts here in uh, wireless charging, but it's a good and nice feature to just be able to put it on a G charging station and to wirelessly charge it. The smallest feline in the world. A rusty spot. The speaker is getting pretty loud but it is lacking any kind of ba bass and it is one of the worst speakers I ever heard, to be honest. When it comes to games, don't expect wonders, so the device is a bit slow in terms of graphics performance, so you can play easy games just like this Never Put game that is an easy um, mini golf game that I can play here and I can set up my shot a bit higher and let's see hole in one or not ah so close and this is a little bit how the whole device feels so close to be a nice and good linux phone but it's not quite there especially with ubuntu touch running not the best on this device i think the device would have run better with a bit better specs like instead of the helio p23 a newer snapdragon 665 for example would be a lot better or even a Dimensity 8 or 700 series would be much better than this here. So what is the conclusion of the Vola phone? On the one hand it is a very cool concept to have like an open bootloader to have alternative operating systems on your device but it feels like a little bit half-baked in terms of the hardware. Don't get me wrong, the hardware from the outside looks okay, but in the in, on the inside it looks a little bit like dated already. And I feel like the potential of Ubuntu Touch on this device is not really used. So it is not very good optimized on the hardware itself. And this leads to like a little bit of a stuttery feeling. So from an everyday perspective, as an everyday user, I would think, okay, if I buy an Android phone for the same price, I get a lot more done, I get a lot more fluid design, a lot more up-to-date kind of feeling and usage. On the other hand, in terms of the Linux world, the alternatives to Android, 
I get a good operating system with support, with the newest software, even newer software than the others, just like Safe S and all the other alternatives that are out there offer you. But it is still lacking in terms of applications. And if you think about the open source spirit, I would like to think doesn't make it more sense to use an Android open source operating system that probably runs more fluid on this device, on this dated hardware? Or does it make sense to have Ubuntu Touch running somehow smooth more or less, but not as optimal and not as fluid as it could be on a modern day device? What do you think? Just write it down in the comment section. What do you think about this Volaphone, this concept and the implementation of Ubuntu Touch? Does Ubuntu Touch still need more work to run on this device or is Ubuntu Touch really not capable to run fluidly on this dated hardware? And what does it also say about other operating systems and their ways to try to keep up with Android? Is it possible? on only modern hardware to keep up of them, with them? Or should they focus more on older hardware, just like on the Volaphone, to see if they can optimize the hell out of it so that they can be an alternative to Android if the device is not supported by the manufacturer anymore uh, via third-party operating systems like Ubuntu Touch or SafeSureS. What do you think? I'm very interested. Just write down in the comment section. Otherwise, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content like this. And that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.